left in the in the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup, and of course, Orlando City, the defending champions. But some big news this week: Ezra Hendrickson is out, and it is Frank Klopas who is in. Yeah, I guess you can understand the thinking. Their sec second bottom in the East, no wins in the last four in the MLS. And the last match was a 3-0 thumping by Nashville, which, to be fair, could have even been worse. So the powers of B feeling that now is a good time to make the change, and they've done exactly that. And Jerdan Shakiri, he's going to be an important player for this team to turn it around. He has an in his history. We all know what a fabulous player he's been overseas, but he needs to show it here. The fans, you know, believe that as a DP, he's got to do more. He's got the ability to do more. This would be a great stage for, for him to show us just what a great player he is. And on the other side, Salo Pompeo, he's going to try to lead the line tonight for St. Louis City. It's been a bright start for the youngster. Yeah, got a goal in the last match against Portland in that 2-1 uh, defeat, but he's a youngster, 23-year-old Brazilian, so he's got a future ahead of him and uh, a chance for him to get himself a regular starting spot in that St. Louis City side. And quite a few line lineup changes from the weekend. It's eight changes for Chicago and seven for St. Louis. Yeah, easier to tell you who, who's staying for Chicago Fire, just Omsberg, Federico Navarro, and Shakiri, who remain um, from the team that lost to Nashville 3-0 uh, in a 4-2-3-1 lineup. And for St. Louis City, it's Parker, Perez, Leuven, and Pompeo who remain. So here we go. We are all set for kickoff tonight. There's the whistle, and away we go. It's the Chicago Fire and St. Louis City SC for the first time ever. And of course, as the schedule makers have it, they'll also face each other on Saturday right here in Chicago, but at Soldier Field. But we have 90 minutes ahead of us tonight and should be a very intriguing matchup, of course. From the Chicago Fire perspective, a bit of a turbulent week so far with the parting ways with Ezra Hendrickson. It is Frank Klopas who steps in for his third stint as head coach here for the Chicago Fire, but they're coming off a 3-0 loss. They've only won twice so far this season, and the front office felt this was the right time with still so much time in the season and a chance to maybe salvage something this year, and a cup run could really help buoy them. Well, it certainly could, and it's something that Chicago Fire have been good at in the past. Four wins, the, as much as anybody else has managed in the MLS. So it is a tournament with which they've got a very good relationship. And if you want to lift the fans and the club, a good cup run will help. But Frank Kloppis himself has been successful, the fourth most successful manager in terms of wins in Chicago Fire history. So maybe it all comes together. I guess that's why you make the change. You just hope that a new manager gives you a lift, a change, a bump. And uh, today would be a great chance to prove it. And if, as you mentioned, they play each other twice in two matches. What a good start that would be for Frank Kloppas if he can pull off a double win against St. Louis City, which might not be that easy. Yeah, it's been a very good start in this inaugural season in Major League Soccer for St. Louis City. Second place in the Western Conference, six wins out of nine games, of course. All those wins to start the season, they won their first five by a combined 15-4. They were dominant to start this season. It's cooled off just a little bit. And of course, last time out, only played 50 minutes against Dallas because of the weather delay. But Bradley Carnell said he was very pleased with the performances. It was on the verge of one of our best performances of the season. Unfortunately, they couldn't finish it off. But it seems like things are starting to get back in the right direction for this team. Yeah, it certainly does. And if you have a look at their goal difference, it's 10 and it's the biggest in the West. So they're doing the stuff right. And the flag stays down. It's Hale Selassie! Chicago, two minutes in. They have taken the lead against St. Louis. You couldn't ask for a better start. There's the response. 1-0 fire. That's a good finish, isn't it? Manages to beat the goalkeeper quite comfortably. And there is the new coach, Frank Kloppis, in the background, just having a quick word. And we were saying, this, it's a bump that you get sometimes when you change managers. It's a lift amongst the players. And it seems to have happened already. Not much Ben Lund could do about this in the goal. Look, it's just a, a long header, perhaps a little bit of sleeping going on in defense there for St. Louis City. But Hal Selassie gets away. A little bit of a deflection comes off the foot there of Pineda. And it goes over Ben Lund's arm. So the goalkeeper, it's the deflection that beats him. But what a great start for Chicago Fire. Can they keep it going? That's the big question. You couldn't ask for a better start. That is the second goal so far this season for Marangel Selassie. The 24-year-olds in his first season with the club. He's technically on loan from Lugano in Switzerland. 
Swiss youth national teamer. And it's got to be a thrill to be able to play with Jerdan Shakiri, who has been a legend with the Swiss national team. And he's doing pretty well for himself now as Chicago has the opener. And all of a sudden, St. Louis have to play from behind. Yeah, a couple of questions about the center backs in that one. It was a simple header out of sort of defensive midfield and two center backs, Parker and Hebert, perhaps just caught settling into the match. A little bit too easy for Hal Selassie to get past them. Got the benefit of that deflection off the foot of Pineda. So not the foot of Pineda, the, the foot of if Hebert. But that's what they have to, you have to be sharp from the kickoff and they weren't St. Louis City. Now it's up to them to fight back into the match. Well, it was interesting in talking with Bradley Carnell. He said we wanted to put out a, a, a pretty strong team just based on they only played 50 minutes over the weekend as that's going to be another challenge. And a whistle will go the way of the Chicago Fire here. So a chance to potentially add on to this is it's Gutierrez who is down. Brennan Stevis, our referee tonight. Got to focus now. St. Louis City, they can't allow this to get away from them. Just confirmation it was Hebert whose foot it came off for that goal. But, you know, you're 1-0 down away from home in a cup match. It's not like a league where you can think you can bounce back in the next game. You've got to do the business right here, right now, in the 90 minutes that you have. Shakiri stands over this, his first U.S. Open Cup start for the Chicago Fire. Shakiri delivers. The heads go up. This is headed out of play. It's a corner kick coming. Already, St. Louis has been under immense pressure to start this in the opening five and a half minutes. Just to pick up on your point, the start St. Louis City have had to this season has been absolutely phenomenal. Bradley Carnell doing a brilliant job. And that's important that they keep that momentum going. They don't let it slip. Gutierrez, three assists so far this year in Major League Soccer. Lifts this in, was looking for Hale Selassie again. Let's move forward, headed away. Chicago able to keep this alive. He's trying to pop that one up, nothing doing. Navarro. Is that going to be another foul? It will, and another set piece coming for Chicago. Well, they are good at Chicago at home. And in seven matches, they've got, they've been unbeaten. Five of those have been draws at home for Chicago Fire. But I'm beaten at home, and that's the sort of thing you cling on to when you're going through a bad spell. They do have this home match, and I believe they're at home in the next match against St. Louis City as well on the weekend. There's the service. It's a bit too close to Lunt, who's able to push this away. Trying to play this down the line. Suke just running out of room, and this will roll out of play. St. Louis trying to get back on track here. And of course, going back to their last U.S. Open Cup match, the third round, a 5-1 win over Union Omaha of USL League One. Zeal Jackson scored twice, Akil Watts, Edward Leuven as well. There's a look at Frank Klopas, though. Stepped in for three seasons from 2011 to 2013, and then again as an interim coach after Rafael Vicky was fired from the club in 2021. And Klopp is saying that he believes there's enough quality in this squad to reach the playoffs. This is one of the issues has been, of course, injuries, but I think that's true of most clubs. But he feels the quality is there, not just to reach the playoffs, but have a good run in this Open Cup, which he says is a priority for Chicago Fire. Well, sometimes when you look at the standings in Major League Soccer and who wins the U.S. Open Cup. It's not always those top teams. Sometimes it's those teams that are looking for a bit of a kickstart to their season that can maybe try to gain some momentum through the cup. And of course, Chicago has been very successful in their history in this competition. We're trying to lean on some of that coming into play here tonight. Space to work here for St. Louis. It's Jackson on the turn through traffic. 
Jackson couldn't keep it. It's cleared away. There's something else about cup matches that is important for players. It's often or many of the players are fringe players, players who've been on the bench, and it's a chance for them to shine. And every time we've spoken to the coaches, they've always said, you know what? Yes, we're not playing our absolute full strength side. It's not nonetheless going to be a competitive side. And it's a side where players who are coming in have a chance to show us what they can do and and try and vie for a regular starting berth. So for many of these players, it's a hugely important match and a great opportunity for them. You can see that 2003 win for the Chicago Fire. They're celebrating their 20th anniversary in a bit here tonight. Chris Armas, Jesse Marsh in attendance and a little meet and greet with some fans before the game as well. But here comes St. Louis, their first venture forward. Jensen tries to cut this in. Plays it off for Leuven. Kai Kamara tracking back, but Tim Parker and company able to keep it for St. Louis. Hebert. Recently earned his first cap with the Canadian men's national team earlier this year in Nations League against Honduras. As for Chicago so far in this competition, just one game under their belt so far was a 3-0 win against Chicago House. So a Chicago Derby in the last round. A comfortable 3-0 win. Shabilko scored, and so did Kendall Burks. He scored a brace in that game. Going back to St. Louis, want to give their fans a shout out. A record 22,423 were in attendance for that game against Union Omaha. 10th best attendance all time, but the best attendance for a third round U.S. Open Cup match. So they were excited to see their team in the Open Cup for the first time, and they showed out. There's no doubt about it. Yep, they've got a decent result there. 5 1. And uh, Azil Jackson getting a goal there. Pompeo, Akil Watts. In fact, Jackson got two goals. And Edward Leuven as well. So a lot of those players who are playing today had the enjoyment of that comfortable cup win and hitting the back of the net. Question for these players here for St. Louis City is can they pick up from this 1-0 deficit they have and get themselves back in this game? Here's Suke. Salasi trying to bounce out of pressure. Now it's Shakiri. Tries to switch the point of attack. This one comes off to the far side. Kamara waits in the middle. Looking for the service. It slipped in. Shooting chance! And the shot is dragged wide by Federico Navarro. The young Argentine trying to make something happen quick on the turn. He wasn't too far away. He had Ben Lund scrambling for this one. As it comes in, he's got a bit of space. Hasn't, hasn't picked up, been picked up. He's run into the box. It's allowed him to lose his marker and get free and turn. So again, not the best marking in that St. Louis City defense. And Ben Lunt, no doubt, a little bit concerned about the sharpness of his defenders in front of him. Seems to be a energized Chicago side so far to start this game. Of course, the goal coming in the third minute. What's going to be the response here from St. Louis? Obviously a long way to go. It's on the way back for Spencer Ritchie. It's always important for Chicago to be in this competition, but the last two editions in 2019 and in 2022, they lost their first game. Going back to 2019, and it was actually against St. Louis FC, a different St. Louis <laughs> side that they beat. Last year was Union Omaha who took down the Chicago Fire in penalty kicks. They are back on the winning side of things and trying to build off of that win against Chicago House. Here's Leuven weaving his way through. Trying to get the cross away, was blocked down. Chicago trying to play out through some of this pressure. So many Red Bull principles part of this St. Louis team and Bradley Carnell and his time with New York Red Bulls as an assistant. Similar playing style. Here's Tim Parker. Gonna move this out wide. Options to pick out in the middle. Still bouncing through. Jensen on the chase. Suke. Have to play it all the way off to the near side. 
He's still coming. He turns it over in the middle. Pressure pays off there for St. Louis. Here's Jackson. Trying to lay this off. He couldn't get it back. Shakiri. El Selassie, he's dispossessed again. Leuven. Leuven. Thing to really test Spencer Ritchie there as it bounces out of play. Yeah, probably not Leuven's best strike as the fans watch on and they've got to be delighted. Whenever you make a managerial change, if suddenly you start winning, then the players get an up, the fans do as well, and they both feed off each other. I just wonder with Frank Kloppas, I don't know if he wants a job full time, but certainly this early in the season, if he gets a good run going in both cup and league and goes up into the playoff positions, there's a chance that he might be offered on a long term basis. It's moved out wide. St. Louis coming forward again. This ball bouncing in. Second ball kept alive. Comes back centrally. Leuven picks it up. Trying to move this across. Nikhil Watts. Pompeo trying to get to the end line. It was touched out of play. It's a corner kick for St. Louis City. This is always a great opportunity to get back in a match when you're down. You get a set piece, chance to bomb the ball in the box, and you can see all the big boys moving forward. Carl Hebert's in there. And Tim Parker joining him. Leuven delivers. It's a good ball in, and what a chance it was for Jared Stroud. He was in acres of space there, right in the middle of the box, and he puts the shot wide. This is a great chance for Jared Stroud. He manages to lose his marker. He's there on his own, six yards out. Surely got a hit target from there. He's misdirected it completely. It's one thing if he gets it on target and Spencer Ritchie makes the save, but. Just totally missed from six yards out. Great chance to go back on level terms. Stroud with three goals and a couple of assists so far this year. Coming over from Austin FC, where he spent a couple of seasons before that with New York Red Bulls. So that was Bradley Carnell very well. Speaking of the Red Bulls, they have a 1-0 advantage over DC United. Miami has also scored against Charleston. And how about this? The Pittsburgh Riverhounds have taken the lead against the New England Revolution. Wow. Plenty of other Open Cup matches going on around the country. And the Rebs are at home in that match, aren't they? they? Sure are. Wow. Well done, Pittsburgh. Here's Hale Selassie. Some pressure there from behind. It was Gutierrez going to ground. Kai Kamara trying to keep this alive. Kamara, triple teamed over there on the far side, eventually turns it over. Jackson looking to play this into space, but he puts it right out of play. Interesting seeing Brian Gutierrez there in the middle. There's been a lot of talk about should he play alongside Jordan Shakiri, And the fans have been asking for that. Well, they get them playing side by side. So far, it seems to have worked well, given the scoreline. I'm sure the coach in the background there is delighted. Tries to be very happy with this start. Getting the early goal. And are just able to get rid of that. Suke. Parker is headed down, but the flag is up for offside. Of course, a look at Bradley Carnell, and I didn't know this. We got on the call with him, and his eyes lit up when he saw your face, Gary. <laughs> yeah, well, we've got uh, friendship history back in South Africa. And when I finished playing, he was just starting to play. Had a very successful career in Germany. Did extremely well. And now in the coaching skills area, he's also doing extremely well. So it went about a hell of a nice guy. It must be great fun to play for because real genuine person and 
so far a fantastic start to the season but as you pointed out there's been one or two results that haven't gone well in recent weeks and he's well aware of that and he wants to get his team back on that winning way that they showed in those first five games and this cup match is important to him as well it's loont as you said with the the press coming from new york red bulls and he's previous history in Germany does believe in this high press and as the match goes on you would expect St. Louis City to to fight their way back into this game to make life difficult for Chicago Fire Kamara out wide this deflects out of play. And how about Kai Kamara coming off his 400th appearance in Major League Soccer? That is just an incredible milestone to get to that number. And he's scored everywhere he has gone. Gonna be with Montreal, Minnesota, Colorado, Vancouver, New England, Columbus, <laughs> SKC, Houston, San Jose, some time in England as well. Long career for the Sierra Leone International, but so great for this game. Here's Suke. Looking to play this into the path of Kamara off his chest, saved! Ben Lute, a big time stop to keep this at just 1-0. And Kai Kamara again popping up for Chicago. He's so sharp around the box, isn't he? Kai Kamara, Ben Lund doing well to stop this. The ball in, a little bit too easy for him to turn and shoot. Tim Parker allowing the turn. And again, question marks meant the two center backs. It's one thing getting the ball. You should never allow a striker to be able to turn and get a shot on target, which he is able to do, Kai Kamara. He also got that wonderful header in the match at home against New York Red Bulls from the near post. So he's dangerous on the ground, dangerous in the air. Or four goals as now will go against Chicago, but four goals leads this Chicago team. 38 years old, he's still getting it done. Play this down the line. Pineda cuts it out. Chance for Kamara to chase this down. Loon was calm as he cleared it away. Look at the pace of Kamara. He's still very, very quick for a 38-year-old. He's got that acceleration, that burst of speed. Most players, as they get older, they drop back a little bit and they rely on their passing, but not Kai Kamara. There's Watts. Stroud right back for a kill. Watts who keeps it moving. It was cut out. Gaston Jimenez just able to lunge and get a foot on it. Amara trying to hold play up here for Chicago. Going to ground here. Play will be stopped. Let's see which way the referee wants this to go here. Looks like Kakamaro is in a lot of pain. Felt like he won the ball, but he won it by by throwing his entire body into the tackle. So, as you say, the referee could see it one of two ways. Let's have a look here. Look how he throws in legs and knees and wins the ball. Question was, did he endanger the opposition in the process? He certainly endangered himself because he took a, a big knock there. Tended to here. I think we also have to bear in mind with this St. Louis City side who are sitting second top in the West. And not only is it a great start to the season, and yes, they have had a couple of results that, that haven't gone exactly their way in the last few weeks. But I mean, this is a new set of players, new coach, new team. And when we chatted to Bradley Cornell, he was saying that 
They went away to camps in Florida and California to get to know each other. And so to achieve what they have done in such a short time, that, that really is absolutely brilliant. And I said the beauty of a new group is getting to know each other. And through those trips, they've been able to do so. He said when they were waiting out that weather delay as Kamara strides back on in Dallas the other day, they only got to play 50 minutes, but he said the video crew put up the first half in the locker room. He said they were kind of laughing at each other of, and just kind of ribbing each other, saying, hey, you should have done this, you should have done that. And they were also just trying to keep it very light. So it seems like this team enjoys being around each other, and so much of the first year can be about coming together as a team. And as long as like being around each other, that's that's a good start. Certainly is, and five wins in your first five games is also That'll help. <laughs> yeah. But it's a long season, and I'm sure Bradley Cornell's only aware that they can all turn very sour if you get into a losing sort of run. So he'll be looking for a turnaround in this match and the match that follows on the weekend. There's Jensen trying to move that out wide. Jensen again. Couldn't keep it. Another sliding challenge put in and a bit too much there from Perez, the youngster. 18 years old, youngest player in this lineup today for St. Louis City. I think the ref is going to bring this one back. There was a challenge put in on the far side. heard much of the name of Celio Pompeo up front yep. for St. Louis City. He's been quiet. Goal scorer in the last match in that 2-1 defeat against Portland. So obviously not getting too much service. I don't think anyone is up front. Not uh, Edward Leuven either. And that's maybe credit to Chicago Fire and the pressure that they put on in midfield. But no doubt Celio Pompeo wants to make a name for himself and he'll need a bit of service to do that. Many of these players for St. Louis City 2, pardon me, St. Louis City played for St. Louis City 2 last year. And they actually got to play in the Open Cup. They bowed out though against Louisville City in a dramatic penalty kick shootout. But they do have some taste of this competition, at least some of those players. And that St. Louis City 2 team from a year ago ended up going all the way to the MLS Next Pro Cup where they lost to Columbus Crew 2. So, a lot of these younger players have experience of playing in knockout style games through the playoffs and in this competition. And of course, some of the more senior players have played in this competition previous as well. But just because they're a first year club in MLS doesn't mean they don't have a little bit of experience throughout. Here's Jackson on the move. Shake free there from Amsberg and Navarro. What a throw out of it. Pedro. Work his way in field. Pedro keeps going. Can he turn the corner here? Trying to get the cross away. Richie able to keep this in play and prevent a corner kick or did he? Looks like the referee's pointing to the corner flag, and it will indeed be a corner kick here for St. Louis. Good work there by the left back. And good work by Edward Leuven as well. Do you see the little flick that he passed the ball through? Great bit of skill just to set Pedro on his way. Goal coming in the third minute of this game. Aaron Hale Selassie. the in swinger it's a good ball in but Richie is up to claim it strong goalkeeping there yeah it's good goalkeeping come and pluck that out the air takes all the pressure off the defenders it's a 
immediately won back. Pompeo. The fall for Celio Pompeo to get the shot away. Another deflection put in, but maybe the best scoring chance of the night for St. Louis City. It's another corner kick. That's a service that he wants. Pompeo up front. That's when he can start to show his ability and skills. He got that pace to beat the defender. And here, a really, really good tackle there coming in from Pineda. Blocks him from getting a shot on target. Moving again to take this from the corner flag. The outswinger bounces once. But he tracked down all the way on this near side. Stroud. Float this forward again. Kamara is there to get his head to it. A little bit of let this bounce out for another throw in. It's Kai Kamara coming back from and doing his defenders du defensive duties. That's what you want from your star striker. Tuck them away at, uh, at one end and come back and, and do defensive duties at the other. Bouncing through. Chicago will get this away. All the way down here for Ben Lunt. Both teams have three shots so far in this game, but Chicago have two of those on target. St. Louis have not tested Richie so far. Did have that one chance for Jared Stroud, six yards out and Missed the target completely. That was a really good chance for the number eight there. So a set piece opportunity. Leuven again will stand over it. Clips this forward, Richie off his line, punches it away. And then there was a more convincing clearance after that to get Chicago out of trouble. Psuke, play this into space, Shakiri on the move. Gutierrez trying to weave through, Hebert though a clean challenge. The youngster has been very impressive for Chicago this year. Three assists, signed his homegrown contract in March of 2020. Already his fourth season with the Chicago Fire. Ripe old age of 19. By the way, Shakiri doing really well to hold that ball up in attack. Had two players on him. He was still able to feed the ball in there to Brian Gutierrez. That's what they want from their DP. More play like that, more where he bosses the midfield, creates opportunities, brings the strikers into play. Need to get him on the ball as often as they can, I would think. Some words being exchanged here. Perez to advance it through the middle. Not been a lot of space for St. Louis City to operate in that area of the field as Kamar leads the charge the other way for Chicago. Morrow and Shakiri will now find Kamara. The cross coming in, stabbed away by Parker, and out for a throw in. Good defending by Parker, absolutely crucial that he got his foot on that. You can see that Brian Gutierrez was just waiting to tap that into the net. The defenders now doing their job, got a little bit slow to get going in this match, but that was much, much better there from Parker at the back. The end line, the cross comes in. It's headed away. Right on the volley, blocked away by Leuven. Foot race for this one. Jensen will win that race against Suke. Leuven for Jackson. Trying to switch the point of attack. It's Akil Watts. And that pass off the mark. And now Miguel Navarro coming back the other way. Navarro into the path of Kamara. The back heel didn't quite come off as Navarro stopped his run.
Vans, dive deeper into the thrills and drama of the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup. Join the conversation on Twitter and Instagram at Open Cup and on Facebook at Official Open Cup. With there, Bradley Carnell, John Hackworth, part of the staff under Bradley Carnell. Of course, he was the one that was the coach of that St. Louis City 2 team a year ago. Pedro and now Stroud. He'll advance it through the middle. Leuven. Gonna play this in behind. Pompeo with Pineda. Looks like another corner kick upcoming for St. Louis City. These are starting to mount now for the away side. Now they're fourth. They've got to make them count though. Was a chance for Jared Stroud came from a ball whipped in from the flank. So if it comes in again, they've got to take that chance to get back on level terms. Leuven flicked along and out of play. What a chance there at the near post by Tim Parker. That's that's a great run from Tim Parker to get ahead of the defenders, but he just puts too much on it. He's trying just to flick it on, and it just comes off, off the head in the wrong angle. And you try to flick it on with as little added effort as possible. That's what he was trying to do. I still did fantastic to get in front of the defenders there. Don't forget, there's more U.S. Open Cup action ahead tomorrow night as four matches will be streamed here live on the BR app and BR Football's YouTube channel. Wednesday's coverage kicks off at 7 p.m. Eastern as Cup set minded Loudoun United hosts the Columbus crew and fun doesn't stop until Portland Timbers and Real Salt Lake renew hostilities at 10.30 p.m. Eastern. Visit usopencup.com for the full schedule and links to watch all of the action. Eight games tonight, eight games tomorrow. In this round of 32, the draw coming up on Thursday. More teams will enter this competition, so just whittling it down from here. Round of 32. Finally get that bracket. You can fill out your bracket, Gary. We can do some bracketology. <laughs> well, there was a few surprises last year. Sac Republic knocking out three MLS sides and getting to the final to play Orlando City. Didn't expect that. They were absolutely stunning, the USL side, all the way to the final. Piece chance here for St. Louis. They'll take it short. Here's Watts. Flicked forward and cleared away. Moving again, surveying. Dance on the ball, Leuven on the turn. Trying to play it into the path of Jackson. It just seems like St. Louis City running into all those blue shirts back behind the ball. A lot of defending here from Chicago. As now they look to get out in transition. El Selassie. This one skied out of play. I guess it's one of those things that coaches often do when they, when they take over is they defend first. It's the philosophy. If you give nothing away, you've got every chance of winning a game. So keep it tight in defense, do your job. See if you can score in the counter attack, which is pretty much what Chicago Fire did in the third minute. There's one long header from inside their own half and Hell Selassie gets on the end of it. And that deflection off the foot of Carl Hebert beating Ben Lund. And that's the, that's the tactic and it makes a lot of sense because Players, if they keep clean sheets, if their defense is strong, it gives them a lot of confidence in getting results. There's 
Mauricio Pineda, who actually got credit for that assist on the goal. And now maybe space for Leuven to work into. Jackson lays it off. Stroud moves it out wide. Watts tries to cut it in. Maybe an appeal for penalty there, half-heartedly at least. Navarro goes down and goes back Chicago's way. This could be where the injury to Kai Kamara comes there. Just as he's moving away, his right ankle gets stepped on. He seems to be limping a little bit. Hopefully he's okay. up that knock just a little bit ago and then that challenge put in as well. We'll see how much longer he can participate in this game. Jackson is possessed to throw in for St. Louis. Had a good spell, St. Louis, the last 15, 20 minutes. They seem to have more possession. They've been probing around the edge of the box. And as mentioned, Chicago find more of a, defense, a defensive pose. Morrow gets this away again. Parker steps up. Once again, St. Louis City get the possession. And as I say that, they lose it. <laughs> and here's Shakiri. Streaming forward, options to either side. Shakiri now for Kamara. Play back for Gutierrez. The fire will keep it. It's Navarro for Omsberg. Suke plays it infield. Jimenez through the line. Shakiri. Jerdan Shakiri. Didn't get enough power behind the shot. It's an easy save for Lutz. Yeah, comfortable for the goalkeeper. Expect more from a player of Shakiri's quality, but I guess every shot can't be a, a pile driver. But whenever he gets the ball, he's got such a sweet foot that you do expect a lot more power than what he was able to deliver there. And I guess that just feeds into the whole narrative that so much is expected of Jordan Shakiri, given his history, the teams he's played for, the World Cup success he's had. I haven't quite seen enough of it yet in that Chicago Fire shirt. And of course, the other DP in Harold Torres has been battling injuries and just trying to get him healthy as well. Get them both on the field at the same time would really help this team out, get them back on the right track. Only made two playoff appearances since 2010. Spencer Ritchie hasn't had much to do. He hasn't been really tested. Did flap a little bit of that one ball in the box about five minutes ago and eventually managed to clear it. But other than that, whatever's come his way is dealt with well and there hasn't been that much coming his way. That'll, that'll concern Bradley Cornell. I think as a coach, you always look at the goalkeeper, the opposing goalkeeper, and say, have they had to make important saves? And the game will go back to that Jared Stroud chance, six yards out, unmarked trying to get on the end of a cross and knocking it completely wide of goal. If that goes in, different different game, obviously, different feeling amongst the St. Louis City players. Now they've got to try and create a few more of those good chances. Another game has kicked off Minnesota and Philadelphia, and actually Charlotte, who got a goal against Orlando. So they lead 1-0 in that game. Neil Uzviak will score that goal for Charlotte. One foot out of play by Chicago. Another throw in coming here for St. Louis. fell down. St. Louis couldn't take advantage of it. Here's Kamara for Shakiri. Distribution out wide, but not wide enough as Pedro stepped in. On the line.
line looking for Jensen. Suke touches it out of play. Again, looking at Shakiri, that pass out wide didn't reach its intended recipient, and let's see what he does now. But the quality needs to improve from the star player, Chicago Fire. Switch of play from Armsburg. Navarro steps forward. He's in the path of Gutierrez. All those white shirts converging, but it falls for Shakiri. Trying to return it for Gutierrez. Nearly got on the end of it. Shakiri picks it up again. It's Suke. Shakiri loses out. And commits the foul. Just some frustration, it looks like, yeah, from Jardin Shakiri. 100%. He is frustrated, probably with himself. He's, again, just losing possession too easily. First touch, out of the standard that you would expect from him. Perez tracks it down. Stroud for Jackson. Again, so many blue shirts for St. Louis to deal with here as they look for that equalizer late on to this first half. Bull coming all the way back in the third minute of this game. Heavy challenge put in and it leaves a Chicago player on the deck as this comes out of play. We get into one minute of stoppage time, but the trainers will come on here and probably go past 46 minutes here. Don't think there was any nastiness in that tackle. Both players going for it fairly, and one comes off with a knock. Hope it's nothing serious. Just wondering what the managers say at halftime. They're busy preparing their halftime talks in their, in their head for Frank Klopp, it's all good. Defended really well, haven't given St. Louis City anything to work with hardly. Took their one chance from Heil Selassie really well, and Kai Kamara had another. So I think his team talk is just keep doing much of the same. For Bradley Carnell, that's the interesting one. Does he make any changes? He's got subs he can call, but he's got a pretty strong side out there. You probably want to give them a good, good portion of the second half to see if they can make something happen. But Edward Leuven, haven't seen enough of him. Jared Stroud, Celia Pompeo, players who are good attackers. Just really have been a bit quiet in this match so far, but still a second half to come. That's Gutierrez, who will get back to his feet here. Lopas has actually been given a yellow card. Looked like he had spiked the ball when it rolled over to him. Just frustration that maybe there was no foul, and Gutierrez makes the slow walk off, but he looks okay to continue on. It didn't look like a foul. It looked like a sort of 50-50 that both players went for, fairly and honestly. It seems to be okay. Brian Gutierrez, what a talent, 19 years of age. It's a game we're seeing in the USA. So many really, really good young players coming through the system. Another foul. This will go against St. Louis. And now some tempers flaring here. Just a good old Chicago St. Louis tussle. You go through all the sports, Cubs, Cardinals, <laughs> and Blackhawks, Blues. Now we get this one as well, and I think the referee's just going to bring this first half to a close. That's it, that's all. Chicago gets a goal in the third minute. They've defended well, but maybe some of this will spill over into the second half. I think there's a very good chance that will because there's so much to play for. St. Louis City are annoyed, wounded, upset. And uh, certainly Chicago Fire are playing with a lot of fire. So I think it's all set up for a cracking second half. We will see what the second half brings. But so far, so good for the Chicago Fire. It was Hale Selassie's goal in the third minute. That's the difference thus far. St. Louis trying to play from behind. But it's the fire out in front. Halftime.
in the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup. Chicago one, St. Louis nil. Chicago Fire original and Ring of Fire inductee. During his 10 seasons with the club, he played 214 games and helped bring numerous trophies to the organization, including the 1998 MLS Cup, four U.S. Open Cup championships in 98, 2000, 03, and 06, and the 2003 Supporter Shield. He's a seven-time All-Star and went on to a global coaching career, including stops at Major League Soccer, New York Red Bulls, Toronto FC, as well as with the English Premier League, Manchester United, and Leeds United. Please welcome Chris Arbo. Thank you. 
Halftime from SeatGeek Stadium, Bridgeview, Illinois. Round of 32 in the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup. And there's plenty of action going on around this competition here tonight. A lot of 1-0 score lines, to be fair. As we look at the scoreboard, it is actually Inter-Miami that has taken down the Charleston Battery. But the Pittsburgh Riverhounds, they lead New England by a goal to know. That looks like it's our best chance for a cup set right now. Yep, 60 second minutes. There's still quite a bit to go there. Again, it depends on the strength of the team that New England Revolution put out. But Pittsburgh, a very, very decent USL side, as we've seen on many an occasion. And then look for any others. Monterey Bay tonight, look out for that one. If you want to pick a, uh, a cup shock, I, I would fancy them to beat LAFC because LAFC obviously are focusing on other tournaments at the moment. All right. And Sacramento Republic can't count them out as well as they take on MLS's Colorado Rapids. So that is what is to come here today. But of course, there is plenty more action coming your way tomorrow. Is there a game that sticks out to you here? Uh, Nashville Dallas could be a good one to watch. Um, I think all, I mean, LA Galaxy Seattle Sounders is a good one. Uh, there's an all USL match there, Birmingham Legion up against Memphis. So at least there'll be one USL team going through from that clash. And of course, New Mexico United, they'll have their shot at Austin FC. That'll be at 9 Eastern time tomorrow. Of course, you can go to usopencup.com to find all of the streaming destinations for all of these games. Well, the second half is just a few minutes away. We'll step aside again. It is 1-0 in favor of the Chicago Fire. We'll be back highlight stats in the second half coming up shortly. the best. 
getting set for the start of the second half tonight from SeatGeek Stadium in Bridgeview, Illinois. Looking back at the first 45 minutes, well, we hope you're with us right from the get-go because we had a goal about two minutes and 20 seconds in. Yeah, I think it's Pineda gets ahead of here and knocks it all the way through. And Heil Selassie, the quickest to respond and chasing him down there is Hebert, and it comes off his foot over goalkeeper Ben Lund. Have a look, Hebert's chasing Heil Selassie. Puts out a foot, hits it, goes up over Ben Lund's outstretched right arm. So not much the goalkeeper could do, but just a straightforward header coming in from Pineda. And it catches the St. Louis City defense unawares. This one here was Jared Stroud from six yards out under no pressure from behind and doesn't quite make a good contact. Great opportunity to have equalized. Then some lovely interplay coming down the right-hand side. Suke puts the ball in. And Kai Kamara allowed to turn and get a shot in there by Tim Parker, who wasn't tight enough, didn't hold him up. But Kai Kamara, very good turn and decent save from Ben Lund. So as we welcome you back with the former Manchester United goalkeeper, Gary Bailey. I'm Josh Eastern. That is Chris Mueller, number eight in blue. He has come on at halftime. It is the goal scorer, Maren Hel Selassie, who will make way. So the local player, Schomburg, Illinois, his second season with Chicago, of course, after spending a year in Scotland. And started his pro career with Orlando City from 2018 to 2021. Big Ten guy out of the University of Wisconsin, just up the road in Madison. That sets the stage here for this second 45 minutes, and we're talking at halftime, a lot of defending in that first half, especially after the goal for Chicago. And I guess the big question is, is St. Louis going to be able to break them down? Well, we'll find out in the next 45 minutes or so, but XG is 0.46 for the home side, Chicago and 0.71 for St. Louis City. So it suggests that so Lewis have had the better opportunities, or more of them, certainly. But what's critical is the one that has been taken uh, is from the home side. There's Leuven stepped in that passing lane, but he gives it right away. Mueller. Bouncing around the middle. Perez now for Stroud. Stroud, the cross comes in to the back post. Jensen, bit of a hopeful header, especially from that sort of angle. And it's out of play. Yeah, best you can do from that angle is just head it back in the box and hope you find one of your strikers. But he was stretching, probably that's what he was trying to do. And the ball just a touch ahead of him. Puts his hand up because he wants it there. But yeah, he was really stretching just to make any contact with the ball whatsoever. But certainly for Chicago Fire, they have other options off the bench as well as the fans give a good voice there for St. Louis City. But on the bench, they have the likes of Shabilko and Kutsias. And those are two really quality strikers that Chicago Fire can throw on if they want. I guess St. Louis City had the likes of Ostrak and Joachini, so they've got some fresh legs they can bring on that could do some damage. It's not a very far trip. It was actually St. Louis, they flew in this morning. Apparently Carnell saying they want everybody to sleep in their own beds an extra night. And it's just right from south to north here through the state of Illinois. A little bit east, you'll find yourself in Chicago. Whether it be a train, plane, automobile, whatever you want, Gary. <laughs> well, they have to do the same trip again on uh, Saturday, I presume. Go home, have a rest, and come straight back down and repeat, repeat the whole situation this weekend. So the result of this match will flow into the one on the weekend, if there's any Aggression left over, it will flow into that game. So we saw a little bit at the end of the first half. <laughs> we do. I think we're going to see some more as the match moves towards its conclusion. Suke under pressure there from Jensen, but is able to win a throw in for Chicago. forward here's Mueller Gotta make something happen as three white shirts converge now Jackson but he was taken off the ball Navarro now for Kamara Kamara's cross was blocked down it's out for a corner kick just the second of the game for the fire
So they lost possession in midfield, doing really well here. They get on that ball, Federico Navarro, push it out wide to Kai Kamara. And they have defended extremely well in midfield in this match, Chicago Fire. Shakiri, the in-swinger, couldn't get it by the first man, Tim Parker. Ends it out of play. The biggest thing that Frank Klopa said when stepping in was wants to make sure all of his players are clear about the game plan. He said, at the end of the day, you need to go out there and enjoy what you're doing. Enjoy the game. Enjoy coming into training every day. They're just trying to get things back on track, get the energy back, and could have asked for a better start in this game. Fire looked very energetic to start right from the opening whistle. And you talked about the... Maybe the little bump you get by the, the change in manager, <laughs> and obviously it came right away for Chicago. It's amazing how often it happens in world soccer that the new coach just takes over, and maybe players feel their place in the team is threatened because they were getting comfortable under the older coach. Maybe they're excited by new ideas. Whatever the story is, it's in general, there is this bump. And that was a point that Bradley Cornell made when we asked him about facing up to the Chicago Fire team. He said, he just doesn't know what to expect because with a new coach, everything could be different. And certainly Chicago Fire starts it like a house on fire within three minutes, one nil up. Here's Jackson on the turn. The cross stabbed away there by Navarro. Not completely cleared, but Shakiri did well to shield that ball. Comes off to the near side. Watts decides to keep it in play. And here's Stroud. He gets to the end line and wins a corner kick out of it. It's good defending from Miguel Navarro there. That ball came in. He didn't have much time to deal with it. I thought he might have hooked it first time, but he gets a touch and then gets rid of it. This is Azil Jackson on the ball there. Stops it with one foot and clears it with the other. Just in the nick of time. This is good pressure from St. Louis City. It's what the fans will want to see them on the front foot and putting pressure on Spencer Ritchie's goal. And we're Leuven. Once again, fifth corner kick of the night for St. Louis City. First of this second half. Couldn't get it by the first man, Shakiri. Omheu delivers again. And now here's Mueller. Trying to get out in space. Deflected down. Here comes St. Louis again. Jensen for Leuven. It's Leuven. Dispossessed from behind. It was Navarro coming back. Gutierrez will try to release Federico Navarro, but it's shut down by Parker. And now it's Stroud. Stroud's cross is headed out of play. Another corner kick for St. Louis. You can see Celio Pompeo trying to urge his team to keep on going. Those fans in the corner as well. Tell you what, that was a good cross from Jared Stroud. He's whipped it in. Wasn't too far away from Celio Pompeo. I think you can actually see the body language of Bradley Cornell just using the head movement as if to say that was nearly uh, getting Pompeo on the end of that cross. That sort of service, if you can keep getting that service into the box, you're almost guaranteed to get something positive happen from it. He'll just stop things here for a moment. Make sure we're all on the same page. Moving again to deliver. More depth on this, but Richie snatches that one down. A good catch there from the goalkeeper. Good catch from the keeper. And a couple of bodies falling at the near post there. And there's no VAR, so can't have a closer look at it. But don't know if there's any pushing or shoving going on. Hard to see from there exactly what happened. But in the end, the goalkeeper comes and does what a good goalkeeper does and just plucks that one out the air. Watts trying to go quick through the middle. He'll get it right back. Stroud. And it's flicked out ahead. It's Leuven. Pineda tries to get this away. Draw coming right through the middle and trying to keep it moving, but blocked down. Jensen will 
Keep this in play for St. Louis. to Skelter in midfield at the moment. Neither side really getting control of the ball and knocking it around, which probably suits Chicago Fire. They've got the lead. They're quite happy for things to be disrupted. Gutierrez breaks it up in the middle. Here goes St. Louis again. Perez. They spring Pompeo forward. It's Pineda. Perez, moving, just lost it. It's a St. Louis City side that averages the most amount of goals per game in Major League Soccer, just over two a game. As this is played forward, it's Chris Mueller. And good job tracking back. Selmir Pedro able to break that up. By the way, great pass from Shakiri. That's what you expect from him. Pinpoint pass right to Chris Mueller's foot. And unfortunately for Mueller, he couldn't control it. and do something with it, but that's the sort of defense splitting pass that you expect from a player of Jordan Shakiri's quality. You put up the team that has scored the most goals per game in Major League Soccer in St. Louis against a team in Chicago that's only posted one clean sheet in the league. And yet, it's St. Louis that's been held off the board, and maybe more coming for Chicago. It's Navarro, and it's saved. Ben Lute, a big time stop for St. Louis. And now, can they turn defense into attack? It's Stroud looking for Jackson. Jackson right back for Stroud. Maybe that's what can spur on St. Louis City here and go and find that equalizer. Jackson. Stroud again, switch of play, Jensen collects. Just going back to that save, absolutely vital save by Ben Lund. That one goes in, then it is a mountain for St. Louis City to climb. Goalkeeper doing really well. Switch of play, Stroud. Stroud tries to fire this across. Jackson put his head in. Amsberg did just enough to get that away. Parker heads it forward. St. Louis will keep it again with Hebert. Pressure starting to ratchet up. Jensen. He draw on the overlap. Here he is. Tries to cut it back. Jackson for Pompeo. Seal Jackson will track it down at the end line. Doing their best to get this away. Finally, Federico Navarro puts his head in. Mueller will get it out to midfield. Looks like maybe a couple of subs coming for St. Louis here in just a moment. It feels like the right time to make those changes because they haven't been able to. Get that goal that they so desperately need, St. Louis City. And I guess Bradley Cornell feels that fresh ideas, fresh faces is necessary. Pompeo trying to find space. It was a deflected cross. It nearly took it towards goal. Instead, just out of play. And a big chance just a few moments ago for the fire. And it was Ben Luton to come to the rescue. Yeah, fantastic save from the goalkeeper here. And Miguel Navarro with a good run down the left-hand side. Knocks it low. And Ben Lynch is stretching his legs out. Just wonder, could Navarro have gone for the chip? He's gone for the low ball. And most goalkeepers will spread their legs to stop that from happening. But nonetheless, vital save from Ben Lund. So two subs coming on. Tomas Ostrak and Nicolas Joachini. It will be Azil Jackson and Isak Jensen to make way. Also leaving the match. Those are the two subs that we mentioned were the most likely to come on because they have goals already to their name. They can be a big threat. Joachini with three goals already this season in MLS play. So clearly 
Going to make a big difference in this match now that he's on. A player has gone down here for Chicago. It's Miguel Navarro. He's back on his feet. And now the corner kick. Just before the hour mark, he played short. Movin will get it right back. Cross comes in, Richie's up to grab it. Just looking for a different angle on the cross. Good catch from the keeper. It's one he should come and get. It's close enough to goal, but nonetheless, just takes the pressure off the match, because starts to slow it down, give his team a bit of a breather, because they have been under some pressure here in the second half. Short corner, there's only one blue shirt out there. A little bit slow to get the second one out. That allowed the, the ball to be put into the box. Needs to be a little bit sharper defending those short corners to Chicago Fire. Able to turn the corner, options to pick out. Here's the shot, and it's deflected out of play. Mauricio Pineda gets his body in the way, denying Pompeu of a potential equalizer. But St. Louis City putting the pressure on. It's a good run as well, isn't it? Done that in that inside channel there, Pompeo. And then it's very slow for the players, to, for the central defenders to come out in the end. As you say, Pineda comes out and does the block, but he was able to run a good five or six yards in the box before he was confronted. Whistle came before anything in there. Richie was looking for it, and he got it. It's a long way to hold on to a 1-0 lead. They've done very good since the third minute, Chicago Fire, but they're going to need fresh legs and fresh thoughts. There's still 30 minutes to go, and you don't want to be on the back foot for the remaining 30. You do need to start to control the game a little bit more if, if you're the Fire. That will be it for Jordan Shakiri. His first U.S. Open Cup start goes about 60 minutes, and it is Fabian Herbers who comes on. Fabian Herbers with a goal to his credit this season in MLS, his fifth season with Chicago. Flag up for offside. Yeah, Herbers with his 100th appearance for fire last Saturday against Nashville, so been around a while. Been a good servant to the club. It'll be a better servant if you can come on and get a second goal <laughs> and just take the pressure off. Mueller is poked away. It's there for Parker to track down. All the way back to Richie, cleared away. No change in any score line. Everything's 1-0 except Minnesota and Philadelphia's 0-0 at halftime. He's done well, Miguel Navarro, in terms of defending. He's got his body in the right positions, in the right place. He's pushed forward, had that chance. The Ben Lund saved well, so he's been excellent in attack as well and all over. I think has made a really good impression here today. She will come to take this. It's flicked forward, and Mueller couldn't get onto it. Stroud brings this in fields. Here's Perez. Now Parker. It's Watts who advances it forward. Looking for options here, Watts. 
Play it off for Stroud. Watts kept himself on side. Service comes in, bouncing all the way through. It's there to hit for Pompeo. Instead, he plays it back. Pedro's shot will deflect all the way into the corner. That ball still spinning as Pompeo keeps it alive. Pedro. Feels like it's getting closer for St. Louis City, but still nothing all too tangible as foul comes in on Gutierrez. Yeah, those balls are flying into the box now from out wide, and you just get the sense that they will get on the end of one eventually. And that's why it's so important for Chicago Fire to get themselves on the front foot. Is there a handball here at any point? Let's have a look and see if it does. No, just a turn of the shoulder there from Fabian Herbers. It's Kamara who goes down again. He is, he's been through it tonight. A couple of knocks maybe picked up in that first half. He's a good target man because he's got the pace, he's got the size, he's got the finishing ability. And if you're a defender, you're always looking for where he is. The home fans loving every moment of this because they're in the lead. I still think there's a ways to go. The advantage for Chicago Fire obviously is the goal, but it means if they get a second, they can put this to bed. So as much as they're defending well, they can just get a breakaway, something on the counter attack, like the chance that they had for Miguel Navarro. Ben Lund saved so well. So a moment like that could see them close this game out. For St. Louis City fans, it's a case of keep the pressure on and see if you can get a breakthrough. Gary, you like cup sets? Go and tell me which one it is. The Pittsburgh Riverhounds have gone wow. into Foxborough and taken down the New England Revolution. We knew there would be at least one USL championship team in the draw coming up on Thursday, but now there will be at least two. With Pittsburgh joining either Birmingham or Memphis, and it's the Red Bulls who have taken down DC United. That rivalry that goes all the way back to the beginning of Major League Soccer. Both teams that let go of their coaches this week currently either have won or are winning 1-0. There's that bump when you change the coach. But there's still 25 odd minutes to go here and St. Louis City have been knocking on the door. They've been creating little half chances. It's a lot more work yet for Chicago Fire to do, you would think. Menez steps in. His pass though deflected away and Hebert all the way back. To Ben Lunt. Flying boot there, but play continues on. And numbers potentially here for Chicago, and it's Chris Mueller. Mueller cuts it back. The centering feed. Numbers was trying to set it there, and nothing doing for the fire. I just wonder if Chris Mueller could have gone all the way himself there. He had the ball, he had a bit of green grass in front of him. Just thought he could have just gone for it, maybe try to win a penalty to get a shot on target. In the end, he stopped, came back on his right foot, and I think momentum was lost at that stage. Well, it's been a grand total of one shot in this second half between the two teams. It's gone St. Louis's way, it was off target. I think you have to include the save from Ben Lunt as well as a chance, even if it wasn't a shot, it was a sure. great chance there for Miguel Navarro, well saved by the keeper. And there's the actual shots on target, 4-0. But often they don't tell the story, a shot that hits the post isn't on target, and one that bounces 15 times and reaches the keeper yeah. is. <laughs> You've got to weigh them up and put them in perspective. This is slipped through, it's Jared Stroud deflected and taken in by Richie. The deflection goes the way of Chicago now twice after, of course, the goal was deflected. That's Miguel Navarro once again getting in there, making a great block and slowing that ball down. He has been top class in this game from my point of view and 
Just wonder with Jared Straub whether he couldn't let that go a little bit earlier. You could see the defender coming in. Maybe it's a touch and hit as opposed to a touch. Take your time and line things up and then hit it. Easy to say sat down here, of course, but uh, <laughs> this is, you know, Jared Straub's had a couple of little half chances that he hasn't taken. I think it'll be frustrating for Bradley Cornell and the coaching team. The whistle will stop play here as thing away from the ball. Suke and Celio Pompeu will have his name taken. Lots of apologies from Celio Pompey. He didn't uh, mean to be nasty, and he's very quick to hold his hand up there. Let's have a look at it again. And Suke had already played the ball, so it was just a coming together of legs. Trainers might be asked onto the field here. We're down to those final 20 minutes, and you do get the sense that they become more defensive now. Chicago Fire, they've got the, the one goal difference. They might start to feel they can hang on to it for 20 minutes and defend even deeper. Always risky, of course, because you're inviting the opposition onto you. But if they have Kai Kamara as their outlet, then there's always a chance of a counter attack. You can see the coach, Frank Kloppis, in the background just trying to give his team some energy but what a start it would be for him as the interim coach if he gets a result here today and you also wonder what it would mean in terms of when the two teams meet again on the weekend in their mls game that's the fun part of this we don't get one chicago st louis <laughs> matchup we get two Nice to see there's a chat between the players and a and continuing apology there coming from Celio Pompeo. Brazilian and a Frenchman. Mueller. Fans dive deeper into the thrills and drama of the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup. Join the conversation on Twitter and Instagram at Open Cup and on Facebook at Official Open Cup. Long throw. This is headed out of play. It's a corner kick coming for Chicago as they look for some insurance here late on. Fans still in good voice behind the goal, and they'll go crazy if this ball does hit the back of the net because you would think 2 0 up with just under 18 minutes left would be a great position for Chicago Fire to be in. Pushing and shoving continues. Referee steps in. Just looking for some space. Now the corner comes in. Kamara was up for it. Bounces and cleared away. Again, Kamara is such a threat in the air. Nearly causes panic there for the St. Louis City defense, but they do eventually clear the danger. Maybe something on here for St. Louis City. Trying to slip this through. The centering feed, but it's all for naught. Flag is up for offside on Joachini. It did seem like it was a definite offside because all the Chicago Fire defenders came to a stop and even some of the St. Louis City players stopped running as well. But that's the danger that someone like Joe Akini brings to the Chicago Fire defense. Fresh legs, fresh mind. That ability to sprint a lot more regularly than you would do if you had been on the pitch for 73 odd minutes. Yeah, 
Yeah, it does. It does look like it's hard to see from this angle, but it does look like it. And as I say, all the players virtually came to a stop, which seems to suggest it was. Oh, nice little flick there by Gutierrez. It's Mueller. Very shifty there. Gutierrez got his foot back in there, trying to get it back for Chicago. Heavy touch. It's turned over and it's turned in. Fabian Herbert scores for Chicago. Is that the insurance they need to move to the round of 16? 2-0. That's so tough for Ben Lund. He made such a crucial save early in the second half from Miguel Navarro to keep his team in it there, but a bad first touch. He loses control of the ball right by the six-yard line and able to turn it over Chicago Fire and stick it into an empty net. And you would think that's now going to be extremely difficult to come back from. But have a look. Lovely little back heel. And then more pressure from Chris Mueller. But the ball comes through to the goalkeeper. And he should be able to deal with it quite comfortably. Gets laid back to him. Instead of just kicking it, he tries to control it. I'm not sure why you'd want to do that. Just kick it down the field. It's That's why he's playing it back to you. You don't want to be fiddling around in there. But the first touch is bad. And then Fabian Heber just sticks it into the back of an empty net. And that is, you would think that's game set and match now. There's not much time left. 15 minutes. They could do it St. Louis City. But... It really is a mountain to climb now. That is his second goal ever in the U.S. Open Cup for Fabian Herbers. He did score in 2016 for Philadelphia as Stroud goes down. But talking about 2023, that is his second goal in all competitions. Oh, they've defended really well, have the fire. And they made it extremely difficult for St. Louis City. And then they've they've taken their opportunities when they've come their way. It was a, a real gift, but you've got to be there to take it. You've got to put the pressure on. They've done exactly that. And that, along with that very quick early start, and they caught the St. Louis City defense a bit flat-footed. And those are the two goals that separate the two teams. Trying to switch the point of attack. Pedro, positive touch. Tries to play it back centrally. It's blocked down and cleared. Kamara still running hard. About 15 minutes to play. It's broken up again. Gutierrez in space. Akil Watts tracking back. Breaks that up. Now the big question for Chicago. Can they hold on to what they have? It's been a strong defensive effort so far in this game. And they see this out to the finish line. I mentioned it for the game, they're two, three, and five overall in Major League Soccer this year. So half their games have ended in draws. Trying to prevent that, which means extra time if St. Louis can find a couple of goals here in the final few minutes. It's also a very impressive home record for Chicago. If they do get a win here, they'll be unbeaten in eight at home. Yes, five of them are draws, but nonetheless, if you're unbeaten, your home ground becomes a little bit of a fortress. That is something to build on for the rest of the season. Substitution for St. Louis City this season, leaving the match number eight. Couple Brown. of subs coming. Number Indiana nine, Vasilev, Vasilev. Jabulo Blom will come on. Watts and Stroud that will come off the field. One sub still available to Bradley Carnell. So Blom comes on, the South African. Spent his whole career so far with one of your former clubs, the Kaiser Chiefs. Yep, biggest. Shout out. Big, thank you. <laughs> it's the biggest club in South Africa, one of the biggest in on the continent of Africa. Huge, huge support there for the Chiefs. Of course, Indiana Vasilev spent the last couple of years on loan at Inter Miami from Aston Villa. Now his first season with St. Louis City and. Fun little thread between Indiana Vasilev and one of the assistant coaches, John Milleracy, was actually Indiana Vasilev. He's from Savannah, Georgia. He started in the South Georgia Tormenta Academy. Of course, they're in USL League One. 
took on Inter Miami in the last round in this competition. So I guess those two get to come back together here at a bit of a higher <laughs> level with St. Louis City. Cool connection. Well, 10 minutes for Chicago Fire just to do all the good defensive work, slow the clock down. That could be a bit of a late tackle there by a man who's really impressed, Miguel Navarro. Sounds like another sub preparing, but I think first it'll be a set piece for St. Louis. If you pull one back in these next few minutes, makes for a grandstand finish. This one curled in, free header, but it's right down the chute. Great chance there for Joe Acchini. It is a good chance, and that's why he's got to put it either side of the goalkeeper. You've got time, you've lost your marker. Gives you enough time to sort of not just get on the header, but direct it a little bit, force the keeper into a save. Done really well to get into the right position. But now, just like Jared Stroud in the first half with his foot, you're in a great position to make the goalkeeper work and instead go straight to the goalkeeper. So they've had a good couple of chances, St. Louis City, just haven't taken them. Kamara trying to turn the corner. Kamara keeps his feet. It's Kai Kamara to put this away, and it's wide. Loon got a big touch on that one, but what a chance for Federico Navarro in Chicago. Well, Ben Loon just making up a little bit for the mistake and the error for the second goal here. Kai Kamara doing so well. Good vision to see Federico Navarro coming in that right foot of the goalkeeper. Just stops it going in the back of the net from Navarro. Excellent save. It's a corner kick for Brian Gutierrez and the Chicago Fire. Gutierrez, the in-swinger, quickly headed away. Navarro trying to put it right back into danger. And now a chance for St. Louis to break. Blom tripped up, trying to keep the ball. He does well to do so. Ostrock. Blom was trying to play it back into the path of Ostrock, and they weren't on the same page. turn the youngster Perez Joaquini and a substitution will be coming and it's the end of the night for Kai Kamara and what a shift he put in tonight for Frank Klopas in the fire and the crowd to their feet to give him a nice applause coming off. And it will be Kasper Shabilko coming on. He did score in the last round against Chicago House, part of the 3-0 victory. He'll come on for the last few minutes here. Speaking of Shabilko's old club, the Philadelphia Union, still nil-nil against Minnesota United. Get around a defender. Weaving through. Eventually broken up. Well, if interim coach Frank Klopas can start off with not only this win in the cup, but a clean sheet as well, there's no better way to start. He'll give his team so much confidence. The defensive work really hard today. They have limited St. Louis City in so many ways. See the scores scrolling by, and there's two games in action now, right here, and then Minnesota and Philadelphia. Two late games, Monterey Bay and LAFC, Sacramento Republic and Colorado. So the flag is up for offside. Good chance for two cup sets potentially tonight with the USL sides playing host to MLS sides. We'll see what we get. 
Yeah, as mentioned, I think Monterey Bay are probably favourites over LAFC, who almost certainly put out a, a sort of reserve team, second string team, because Monterey Bay at home have seen off San Jose earthquakes already. They're an extremely good side, doing very well in the USL West at the moment. Frank Yallop knows how to win those sorts of games. Yeah, certainly does. Got a history of winning. Sure does. <laughs> and being successful in the MLS. Let's touch off Joe Aquini. St. Louis does not want this to end tonight, but they're going to need to find a couple of goals here very quickly. Such a great atmosphere in St. Louis for that third round match against Union Omaha. 22,000 in attendance, a third round record crowd. For them to be back in the hat, they are going to need to find a couple of goals. Of course, two more games tomorrow here on the BR app and BR football YouTube page. 7 Eastern, it's Loudoun United in Columbus, and then it's Portland Timbers in Real Salt Lake at 10.30 p.m. Eastern time. Go to usopencup.com for the full schedule and links to watch all of the action. And of course, don't forget the draw will come your way to Eastern time on Thursday. The round of 16 will set the brackets. Be our app and YouTube page once again as well. Touch this out wide. Now can they turn the corner? Options to pick out. It's cut back, but deflected. Now the centering feed. Parker comes forward. Peel for handball. Leuven has it blocked again and play on. Good defending again from Chicago Fire. Bodies on the line. Players standing up and being counted. And that's exactly the attitude that Frank Kloppus would have wanted. And he's getting it from his players. It forward again. Mueller will win the second ball. Parker chests it forward. Blom keeps it moving. Vasilev! Again, it's right at Richie. And he's had to make a few big stops tonight, but he's right there to make that one again. Yeah, not, not too difficult for the keeper in a statue like that. And the crowd, <laughs> look at the, the crowd really getting into it. A bit of smoke coming there from. But back, this is the, sh the, the initial strike. Body standing up twice there from Federico Navarro. He took a knock. This is continued pressure and that shot just flying wide there from Vasilev. You do think back to the second goal by Ben Lunt and what a pity from, I guess from a neutral's point of view and obviously from a St. Louis City point of view. At 1-0, this is still on a knife edge. At 2-0, Chicago have that barrier and it's going to take a near on miracle for St. Louis City to get this to 2-2 before the end of play. They're still pushing of course three minutes plus stoppage time. Kind deflection here. Vasilev has to slip it out wide for Blom. He's trying to loft it in. He's cut off from getting back onto the ball. Navarro. And Miguel Navarro will now get this away. Perez for Vasilev. Falls for Ostrock. It's just poked away. And then the foul. Referee trying to step in here. Both Navarro's been playing very solid games in their own rights tonight for Chicago. Miguel and Federico. Yeah, they certainly have. And that was good of Chicago Fire there. Just before half time, they got into Argy Bargy pushing and shoving, but a 2 0 up, two minutes to go. Don't need to get involved, just walk away, which is exactly what they did. So everything going the way of the fire at the moment. That is the end of the night for Brian Gutierrez. Georgios Kutsias will now come on. 19 year old Greek youth international. 
another solid performance put in by the U.S. Youth International and Brian Gutierrez, 19-year-old, continues to impress. Gutierrez, the shirt tucked in and all, will come on for the last few minutes. If you're just joining us, the early show and the late show, I guess you can call it, for Chicago. Third minute and 75th minute. Here's Joe Aquini. Is there anything in this game for St. Louis? He's headed away. Both these teams having played now two games in this competition. But after this game, if the score holds, both teams have the same amount of goals. Both with five. Chicago with a 3 0 win. St. Louis with a 5 1 win to get into this round. But with one big difference. One team's still in the cup and the other isn't. There you go. <laughs> if this result <laughs> holds. <laughs> Just looking ahead for Chicago, of course, they've got St. Louis City on the weekend at home. Charlotte away. Atlanta United at home. Not easy matches, but just feel that perhaps Frank Kloppers can get some momentum going here. Building on this result and this performance, certainly. Try and get the players to buy in. Five minutes remain. Perez, Pedro. Comes back centrally, Perez. Gonna play through the lines on the turn. Lunging for that ball and Navarro finally has to get this away. Joe Akini was battling for it. It'll be a corner kick here for St. Louis and they try to go quickly here. And that touch. And the threat for St. Louis, four minutes left. By the way, Pineda doing so well in the center of that box here, just to hold off the strike on goal. Brilliant defending. Looked almost certain that the trigger was going to get pulled there. Look at him battling, battling, without giving away the penalty and stopping Joe Aquini from getting that shot on target. left in this game for Chicago. Heber. We're just looking at it from a St. Louis City point of view. They have the match again against Chicago on the weekend, but then they have a whole bunch of home matches, Sporting KC at home, Vancouver home, Houston home, LA Galaxy home. So four straight home matches with that wonderful support you talk about, and that could get them back on the right track. Those are all teams. At least most of them towards the bottom of the Western Conference at the moment as well. So actually a chance for this team to really get some results, especially at home, as you mentioned. May not be done here of another corner kick. They haven't played badly if you look at the effort from St. Louis City. So I'm sure Bradley Carnell will take that positive away from this match. Midway through the minimum of five minutes. St. Louis support right in that corner as well. Here's the in-swinger, all the way to the back post, it's headed in! St. Louis will take it, they'll rush back to the center circle. They finally have a goal, it's 2-1. I think that's Miguel Perez who gets on the end of that corner. Brilliant, with pace, goalkeeper comes and doesn't get it, Spencer Ritchie. And that's on him, he's come towards it, then he's gone backwards and missed it, but Brave at the far post, Miguel Perez gets up, takes the risk of getting smashed against the post, makes sure it's on target. But beautiful ball in from Edward Leuven with pace and bending in. And now, again, you go back to that Ben Lund mistake and think, we were talking about a few minutes, if you don't make that at 1-0 down, you've got a chance of getting back in. But to get two goals, so difficult. But there is hope. That's a foul, it will go against St. Louis, and they can ill afford that at this moment. 
That's got to be a great moment, though, for Miguel Perez. His first goal for the first team. He actually scored the first goal ever for St. Louis City, whether it be a first team or second team last year for St. Louis City, too. Came up in the St. Louis Scott Gallagher system. St. Louis player where he grew up. It's got to be a thrill for him, even though this could come in a losing effort, which is one minute to go. It's too little, too late. Not really is a case of slowing this clock down every which way you can, or speeding it up, depending on which way you look at it. <laughs> Just keep, got to keep that ball down in that half of the pitch from a Chicago Fire point of view. Maybe one more chance. Kutsias puts it out of play. And one last roll of the dice here for St. Louis. Just wonder if Kutsias doesn't actually just try and hold on to the ball and keep it in that half and just work the clock down as opposed to trying to shoot from an incredibly acute angle. But they're doing the job, Chicago Fire. They're keeping St. Louis City penned into their own half. Parker. Locked down again. Could see us as well. We'll see if he keeps it this time. Flex into the middle. And that is it. Chicago holds on. They are on to the round of 16. The first ever meeting between the Fire and St. Louis City goes the way of Chicago. 2 1 winners. That's a great start for the interim coach, Frank Kloppas. Couldn't have asked for more. Great performance at home, good early start on the front foot from the very beginning. And Hal Selassie with that first goal in the third minute, they kept it going, they put the pressure on. They benefited from a goalkeeper error by Ben Lund to make it 2-0. And they defended in particular, got to pick out Miguel Navarro for really getting stuck in at the back and putting his body on the line. And it was only a late goal that really gave St. Louis City some hope. And uh, well taken by Miguel Perez, but Congratulations to the Fire. They're back on the winning trail. Well, looking back at these 90 minutes, we start things off very early on. Of course, as the Chicago Fire were able to get that first goal. As the celebrations continue here for the Chicago Fire, but going back all the way to the third minute from back to front, a little flick in the middle, that does the trick. Yeah, it's going to be a header from Pineda and very slow to react are the central defenders for St. Louis City, but someone who's not slow was Al Selassie and he takes the shot, gets deflected off Kyle Hebert and hits the back of the net going over Ben Lunt. But they were very slow, Kyle Hebert and Tim Parker to respond as center backs. So they're very straightforward header through the middle of the park. So one the up to the home side early on in this match. And from then onwards, they, they defended well. They looked for the counter attack. This was the second goal, the ball's going to get played back to goalkeeper Ben Lund. Now, for me, he's got to clear it first time, but instead he tries to control it. And why, I don't know, because this puts him in trouble and gets knocked into the back of the net from Fabian Herbers. And it was Brian Gutierrez who nicks it off the goalkeeper. And that really gave the visitors a mountain to climb. And they did manage 93rd minute. Fantastic corner whipped in far post. Up goes Miguel Perez with a very brave header. And Edward Leuven with a brilliant cross, but not enough. It all came too late. And the fire moved through to the next round. And looking at the full time stats, it was St. Louis with more of the shots and the possession. But in the end, it is Chicago that got the two goals they needed. Yeah, and they, they seem to be in control for most of the match. They were comfortable holding on to the 1 0 lead. They pressurized. They could have, they could have had a second. And it was only a fantastic save from Ben Lund of Miguel Navarro that kept the score at 1-0, then the Ben Lund error. So it was only in the very dying moments of the game that, that St. Louis City really looked like they were going to get something, they could get something out of this game. So for me, great effort by Chicago Fire. St. Louis City needs to sit down, rethink, and come back on the weekend yeah, and try again. Yeah, these two teams play each other in league play on Saturday at Soldier Field. But here tonight, in Bridgeview and SeatGeek Stadium, it was the fire. They'll be moving on to the round of 16. For our entire crew and broadcast partner, Gary Bailey, I'm Josh Eastern saying so long. The Chicago Fire are 2-1 winners over St. Louis City. Good night from Chicago.